this is yet another box on wheels designed with Euro pallets in mind. But no, there is much more to a light commercial vehicle because its drivers need solutions tailored to their needs and the new Renault Kangoo van delivers. Pun intended. Renault Kangoo is an LCV in production since 1997. It comes as a panel van as well as a passenger vehicle. In its second generation, it gained an electric powertrain. Actually, there was a limited first-gen conversion as well, but Renault started making the Kangoo ZE later. Renault Kangoo was also, or still is offered, as Dacia Docker, Mercedes-Benz Citan, and Nissan, formerly Kubistar and now Townstar. The Docker has been replaced with the Kangoo Express, which is, let's call it, the base spec. And then there are the Renault Kangoo van and its siblings, Citan and Townstar. We're talking about panel vans, of course, because passenger versions are for a different episode. And now behold, Renault is the only one in the alliance to come with the optional open sesame door system. Now the front doors opening 90 degrees, well that's interesting in itself, but you have to slide the rear door to appreciate the open sesame. There is no B pillar here as you can see, so there is better access to cargo from the curbside and also you can have this rather interesting racking solution. Now I realize Racking solutions are very individual things. You do everything to your own needs. This is just a demo, but check this out. Bear with me here. There are a few steps to it. But after you've done it 20 times, like I have to film various shots, it's becoming easy peasy. Ha! And, okay, I get it, you've got a ladder to carry and you don't want to put it on the roof rack, so this is not for you. But this is still impressive. I mean, it's expensive, but I'd want one just to kind of show off. I wouldn't be a good handy band, would I? And now for the important stuff. Cargo area length to the divider is 180 centimeters cargo area length to the dashboard is 305 centimeters. The open sesame load opening is almost 145 centimeters wide. The cargo area width between the wheel arches is almost 125 centimeters and in the widest place it's 157 centimeters. The cargo area height is 121 and a half centimeters and the door opening is 10 centimeters less. Without the racking system, you can fit two Euro pallets across back here. Not too heavy though, because the load capacity is 600 kilograms as standard, with the option to increase it to 800 kilograms. Is this a lot or not? Well, I'm not you. You buy a car like this with a measuring tape and a calculator. You want the most car for the price, but that's not just the sticker price, but also financing, servicing, etc. My contractor drives a similar type of car, he's got his own racking system made of shelves you can buy in a DIY store, and when he loaded one of these up with tile glue, it's good he didn't have a long way to go from the store to my place, so watch out with this load capacity thing. And now let's look in the cockpit where you as a delivery driver or a contractor will spend a fair bit of time. This is the nicer, more modern version than the basic Express van and it gets more elegant upholstery, different cockpit layout, different switch gear. The gear lever is up here next to the steering wheel, not down here in the floor. Over the instrument binnacle there is a storage area and around it are two places to mount phone holders and I'm surprised so few car makers use these phone holders. I mean, it's a brilliant solution. Now, in the storage compartment, you get two USB-A ports and a 12 volt socket. Then there is a shelf in the middle of the center of the dashboard. There are these optional shelves up here. And now we have door pockets, fairly large. Storage under the armrest, fairly deep. Glove box or glove drawer, really, very big cup holders, 
place to put your stuff down here, place for your phone up here. You have a lot of places to put your stuff. Now, my only problem are these uh, hooks for the jacket. They are very hard to reach and very small. And the jacket, once you hang it, it pretty much occupies all the passenger space. But this is not a Renault Master to have a wardrobe behind the behind front seats. An interesting option worth considering, uh, and it's not available on this car, is a about 500 euro virtual rear view mirror. So you get a screen here, a camera back there, and uh, you can see what's going on behind the car. Uh, it's something I've seen in, in the Toyota RAV4 and in the JLR cars. Over there, it was a bit of a gimmick. Here, it would actually be useful. A worthwhile and cheaper feature is a wide view mirror mounted on the passenger side sun visor. It helps during maneuvers because you're completely blind over the shoulder. And while we're on the passenger side, the open sesame has the passenger seat belt extend from the middle of the car towards the buckle on the door side. Be careful when getting out because the buckle can probe you where the sun don't shine. Also, storing the headrest under the seat sounds like a great packaging idea, but in real life, dirt gets under the seat and then the passenger gets it in their hair. If you go for the regular van with a B pillar, you can order a version which will carry three people in the front, which means a driver's seat and a double bench that folds into a mobile office. The folding passenger seat is standard on the open Sesame cars, but on other models you have to specify it with the opening divider. Heated seats will depend on the passenger seat, meaning if you go for the folding front seat only the driver can have their bottom toasty, and lumbar support adjustment may be available only with heated seats, which is a weird combination. And continuing with comfort, I'm recording this in the winter, so I wish I had a heated steering wheel. The diesel in this test car takes ages to warm up, so you'll wait 15-20 minutes before it gets warm-ish inside the cabin. Also, I need to have the fan speed set to 2, otherwise the windows start to fog up. And while we're talking about visibility, the A pillars are massive, so it's not just pedestrians but entire cars can disappear behind them be careful when approaching pedestrian crossings or junctions more than once my speed and the speed of other objects aligned perfectly so an accident was narrowly avoided as this is a van it's all about carrying stuff rather than being comfortable during munching motorway miles with that in mind the lumbar support adjustment i mentioned earlier wouldn't be too much to ask for and also there is like a little space for my knee here so I keep hitting the console after a few days I start noticing it. Taking into account you're sitting in front of a resonating tin I would say the Kangoo seems relatively quiet yes there is some sort of rattle from the back but otherwise it's okay there is a spoiler on the roof rack so there is no whistling noise I suspect without the roof rack it would be even quieter. Speaking of the rack, it seems to have minimal, if any, impact on the fuel economy. In combined cycle, I easily managed to go below 5.5 liters, Renault claims. And I understand the car wasn't loaded, but then it's also empty during WLTP testing. And the racking system in the back, as well as that one on the roof, weigh a fair bit as well. I doubt anyone really thinks about performance of a 95 horsepower diesel van, but I checked and instead of the claimed 13.6 seconds, 0 to 100 km per hour took almost 16 seconds. Perhaps on a warmer day, on dry surface I'd do better. The Kangoo van is easy to maneuver. The turning circle is just above 11 meters, an optional parking camera and sensors all around help you also. If you go for the optional 8-inch display, you also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Full LED headlights are more about saving energy than nighttime visibility. Also, the cargo area gets an LED light, 
optional. And after a few minutes, a discharge warning appears on the dash and the light automatically shuts off. Perhaps Renault is just being cautious or maybe it knows something about its electrics that I found out the hard way during the Espace review a few years ago. Anyway, monitor your battery levels just in case. If you want the passenger version, you may want to consider the Mercedes-Benz Citan and in the autumn of 2022, the Citan-based family-oriented luxury T-Class will also be available, so watch out for that. Prices of the Renault Kangoo start at €15,520 net for the Express and almost £18,000 also net for the van or rapid, depending on the market. This 1.5-liter 95-horsepower diesel with open sesame doors and options costs about €26,000 net. Prices for the Sortimo custom racking systems start at around €2,500 net. I know this sounds like a lot of money, but nobody's saying you need to buy the expensive version or that you need to buy the fancy racking system when you can make your own, if you need one at all. Having said that, I think it makes sense to pay professionals to do their job, and if you are a professional yourself, you appreciate the value in professional work. And how do you like the Renault Kangoo van? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.